بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد بن عبد الله الصادق الأمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الأنبياء وخاتم المسلين أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون الذين إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون الذين يقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفرة ورزق كريم صدق الله العظيم براذا نسست الإسلام أو بلافت فيوز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أن أهلا وسهلا أن ويلكم تو أبروغرام We begin our program with our dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala grant our beloved marhumin jannat al-firdaus. Allahumma ghafir lahum warhamhum wa sakinhum fil jannah. Rabbi rhamhuma kama rabbayana saghira. And we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. May Allah grant sabr and ajr for the family of the deceased. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant sabr for those who lost their beloved one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them for that sabr. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala grant them the coolness in their heart. May Allah grant them ajr, inshallah. Brother and sister in Islam, once again we welcome you to Madrasa to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala reward our beloved Nabi Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for that wonderful deen, deen al-Islam and the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brother and sister in Islam, once again we thank you and shukran and let me begin my program with a congratulation to our beloved sons and daughters who married this month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them nikahum mubarak. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala cool their eyes inshallah with the children and happy life inshallah, especially our respected uh, brothers who is uh, married and our viewers actually, the permanent viewers who married. And uh, we were so proud of the brothers and young boys and girls who are watching ITV, our respected brother Umar and Nabila. Uh, Umar uh, is from the family, uh, 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 Jada's family. Our, the son of our respected brother, uh, Rashid Ahmed and Sister Khadija, those who are always watching our program, and Sister Nabila Jabdat, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our sons and daughters to make nikah according the sunnah to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and according the sharia. May Allah make it easy for, for all of us. And uh, we got so many uh, names here, and I know I feel that we have to turn our question to uh, just a comment, but... Uh, our respected sister Fatima, Fatima Sheikh, those who, uh, she got uh, the daughter Nuri. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place her life and our dua for our respected sisters who did not get married. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala send for her a pious, a good husband and good partner, inshallah, under the fall of Islam and under the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nikah mubarak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place their life, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the hearts of the couples together under the, the flag of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. The other request from our respected mothers, as I said many times in our program here, trauma, difficulties, calamities, is the taqdeer of each and every living being. Especially a heavy calamity, we take it, it's called death. It's very hard, it's very hard when we see some occasion like marriage, Eight time, happy occasion, and you look right and left, you don't find your beloved one. So many mothers, in a time of occasion, time of joyness, we can see the tears in their heart. So we ask, I said, I wish you could, my husband could be here, or my son could be here, or my daughters, my mother was supposed to be here. People nowadays, they miss their beloved one, the marhumin, the deceased, and shaitan comes and try to pull us away from that sabr which Allah wa ta'ala gave it to us after the calamity. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did go through this trauma. Pious people, myself, yourself, each and every living being must go through this 
type of calamity and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna kamayyitun wa inna hummayyitun indeed you will die and they will die so shaitan will come to you and try to take out that gift which Allah gave it to you it's called sabr we have to be aware about that and we say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajoon I know I understand it's very painful very painful there is a lot of wound in the heart of the mother who lost her child Allah tabarak wa ta'ala knows that. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala knows that it's not easy. That's why Allah give you ajr bi ghayri hisab because you make sabr bi ghayri hisab. Brother and sister Islam, let's make dua to our marhumin. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala grant them jannat al-firdaus. May Allah grant us the, 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 the baraka of life and also baraka after life which is in death. Ameen thumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. Many of us we feel that we are lonely. You have a wife, children, people, big family, but you feel that you are, l- are lonely. And uh, you, don't, you feel that you are missing something. You feel that no one loves you or everyone wants to attack you. I don't have the honest friend. I don't have a genuine friend. My friends are cheating me. My parents I dis- they don't show love to me. My wife, my husband, I don't know what's wrong with my society. Those people whom I socialize with and I live with, they don't love me. I can't find myself in my community and my society, especially at work or even in, in the time of entertainment, time of joyness, time of calamity. You feel that you are lonely, you are alone, you are not matching with the people. Number one, in San, like me and you, we are social creation of Allah. You can't live alone. That's why nikah is sunnah. And we have to make salatul jama'ah. You can't isolate yourself separately from yourself and from your, your community and from your family. I have to say it openly and straight. If you feel lonely, if you feel lonely, the problem is not the society. The problem is yourself. Because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will never leave the person lonely. That's why Sayyidina Ma'awiyah ibn Abi Talib, Sayyidina Ma'awiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, he said, al-malalu min kawadhib al-akhlaq. To feel bored, to feel tired, is a false attitude. You have no right at all. Because Muslim is not alone. Muslim is not lonely. Okay, you don't have people with you. Oh, you have Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. You're supposed to keep a company with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. We know that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is calling us to be with him. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah, come to salah, come to success, it means come to me. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala insisted that me and you, we have to go to him in his house five times a day. For what? To feel that you are not lonely like the way we the brothers uh, are asking and feeling now. And if the mosque is not enough for you, come to my house in Makkah al mukarramah And then we got ibadat, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ask us to go to him. But many of our viewers now and our sisters, they say, no, but I can't afford, I'm not going to the mosque. Uh, I, don't, I don't have uh, money for hajj and, and something like that. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has mentioned in Quran and Kareem, he said, okay, you don't want to come to me. You're unable to come to me, I will come to you. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala decided to visit you and to accompany you. That's why we find so many ayat. Inna Allah ma'al, and you can, inna Allah ma'al sabirin, inna Allah ma'al muhsinin. You, you got so many uh, words, it shows the company of Allah, but in your place, in your place. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is the most high example. But when we, when we give some example, uh, we just want to bring the meanings a little simpler and easier. King, king, or president, or the chief of the village, or the great person, when he comes to you, or even mention your name in his speech, or maybe you, 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 you get him by your house, we just take a photo with him, we feel very wonderful. And we see now when we took a photo with the president and ministers and king of what, what, we hang it on the wall and we send it to people and we feel very, very proud that we are. And some people misuse that photo 
and they try to oppress people or use it for, gain, for gaining or for making business. He said, I got connection with the king or minister or with the police or, or whatever. Right. What about if the king himself came to your house without invitation? Suddenly, you find the president of the country or the prime minister or the king just knock your door with his caravan, with his subject and his police and his security standing on your street. You become very special, you become very exclusive, and next door will look at you totally different from this moment. If you are sinner and guilty and criminal, they drop that co uh, the court case against you. Police won't arrest you. The media will come try to focus on you. You will find yourself so special. And even those people who hate you start to come closer to you, try to be friend with you because of one visit of that president or that king. Uh, not only that, each and every department of the government it will be yours, especially if you become a friend. You know, those people say, I got connection. And then they will help you. They try to do their best to please the king through you. Brother and sister Islam, that is the king of dunya. This is the president of dunya. What about if Allah himself came to you in the time of Sakaratul Maut? What will Malakul Maut will do? What mala Malaikat of Jannah will do? What Malaikat of Jahannam will do to you? Definitely, you will be a very special guest, very special person in the eyes of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll continue, inshallah, after a short break. Don't go away. La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother and sister in Islam, welcome back to our program. And once again, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that na'mat of being with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in his company in the mosque or in the ibadah. And we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to be with us and with each and every Muslim in this time and the time of prosperity and the time of difficulties. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with all of you inshallah. Brother and sister Islam, before the break, I was talking about such uh, ibadah will bring the king to your house. And we are not talking about the king of dunya, we're talking about the king of the kings, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, Rabbul Izzat, Malik Yawm al As I said, very important, and you became very important when you find the king by your door, or the king mention your name. We need someone to support us and help us. We cannot live alone, and impossible to survive alone. Impossible to be alone in a day of Qiyamah without the intercession and the shafa'at of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we have a court problem, court case, we, we feel very good when we have a lawyer, especially if he's a great lawyer. We call him Shafi'a, the one who can stand for us. If you're stuck on a road, you find a mechanic, very professional mechanic, you feel very good. If, 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 if you're having a problem in a traveling, if you're, you're having a problem in a government, or pro any, any type of problem, if you find yourself stranger and traveler in a country, and you just find one relatives, one man from your village, one man from your street, you feel very good. You got itmi'nan, you got peace of mind. So in any problem, you find a specialist standing there and you feel very good. Uh, what about the person, Allah with him, and he's doing some action to please Allah and to gain Jannah, but he discovered that he was not alone, Allah was with him. What a lucky person the one who gain Allah in his side every day and every moment. Some action, some action, uh, it takes you to the level of the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many ayat, so many verses from the Quran, so many hadith uh, shows, and that, why I'm saying that today, because many people feel that they are lonely. You said, but where is the yaqeen? Where is that? company with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, where is that muhabbat and the love between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Come and, and go now. We are one of two, zalim or mazlum, oppressor or the one who been oppressed. You became unjust to someone or someone became unjust to you. That's why Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was insisting the ummah 
that do not die oppressor. Do not die. You have to finalize your case before you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do we oppress? Because maybe we are over in love. That's why we pay that person extra. Or maybe we're in a status of hatred, dislike. So we drop his haq and we do not fulfill his haq. So the supervisor or the manager or the father or the king or whatever, whosoever in authority, because he loves that person, he give him more. Or maybe he dislikes that person, he does not fulfill at least the, the, his right or the, his haq. So we have to be very careful of our love and our hatred because this is the reason and this is the entrance of oppression. You love your son so much so that you give him more and you deprive the other children. You hate your brother so much so you do not fulfill his haq and that is the zulum come and you become a zalim. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said, Ana ma'a abdi al-mazloom. In hadith al-Qudsi, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said, I will be with my servant who be oppressed. We got two types of zulm. Zulm is called zulm al-andad. That competitor zalim. You know, the same power and the same power are fighting each other. Like we say, America and Russia. That one here, they call it the fight of the, the pool fight or the fight of the equal. Oh, that wrestler, he's equal to the other wrestlers, and they are fighting, or oh, that boxer. When this one hit that one, this one hit that one, we don't feel sorry for any one of them because two of them are powerful. But I mean today that defeating and overpowering and injustice to those who has no power. So in other words, the powerful people are using this power to attack the powerless people those who doesn't have power except Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Even if that person who is being oppressed is not is the enemy of Allah, Allah will stand for him and Allah will defend him. Because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala amongst his name is al-adl, the fair and the just. Brother and sister Islam, in our life now, we'll find the people are misusing the power, power of job, power of money, power of authority, power of uh, physical power, whatever type of power to oppress the people and they don't care about the qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why in Islam, that mazloom, the one who been oppressed, is allowed to complain. Complain in court who complain to people. We don't, we're not allowed to complain and taking our secret out uh, for any test and any temptation and any calamity except if you been oppressed by someone. Because Allah, the system of Allah is justice. It's fair to all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala spoke about this company with these people, the powerless people. Ana ma'al munkasirati qulubuhum. I am with those who got a broken heart. What is a broken heart? Those who felt that they could not defend themselves. Women broken heart, children, yatim, the orphans, poor people, sick people, those who has no one to support them, these people are broken hearts. Because in the day of Eid, you will discover that broken hearts. In the day of fight and the day of defense, you will find those people who are lonely needs Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said, I'm there with this people who got a broken heart. What is a broken heart? Because they have no helper besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my message today for those who got a broken heart, you are very powerful. You know why? Because you have almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. Don't worry. فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ If you, you could not revenge that oppression or that zulm, it's enough for that person to, de to be destroyed because Allah wa ta'ala will send the zalim against the zalim and the zalim will defeat. And we see in our life, we could not revenge, we could not defend ourselves. And time came and Allah sent another powerful person to fix that zalim even worse that we were expect to, to give him. So the Muslim, the one who been oppressed, 
when he make dua, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala doesn't keep a veil and a barrier between that call and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Well, Allah will answer, he said, وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِ لَأَنصُرَنَّكِ وَلَوْ بَعْدَ حِينَ By my dignity and my power, I will support you soon or later. So, brother and sister Islam, be careful to be oppressor. Oppressor to the animals or oppressor to yourself. We oppress ourselves when we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not oppress your wife, your workers, animals, your children. Never ever die as an oppressor or as a zalim. And those who be oppressed, never lose hope because you are very powerful. You are the haq. Having haq with you, have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. So that is the first company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who been oppressed and said, حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل. حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل. The secret of those who been oppressed. When you say, حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل, it's enough to hand over your power and your needs and your affairs in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And such a merciful dua, even when you try to punish that person, Ya Allah, punish him as he deserve, not more than that. Hasbun is like hisab, exactly what he deserves. I don't want him to get destroyed. I just want him to be punished as much as he did oppress me, nothing more than that. Because sometimes, Ahlullah, the people of Allah like you, the pious people like you, they don't wish bad for their enemy. Like your neighbors make problem, throw the dirt in front of your door, they trouble your children, they make noise, they what, what, what. And then you are very disappointed of your neighbors and you don't like him. And then your son came and said, Mommy, Mommy, Daddy, you know what happened? Uncle so and so, the car crashed him and he's in the hospital. Now, the, the, the man of the house, he said, Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't wish for him such much like that. I was wishing that he get a little bit disciplined, but not that man. Let me go and visit him. No, my son. And the children say, hey, my, the revenge of Allah. The punish said, no, I didn't wish for my neighbors to, to lose like that. Ahlullah, the people of Allah, those who have rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another people gain the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are striving themselves against their desire. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ana ma'a ibadi idha jahadu fina. I am with my servants if they strive for the sake of Allah. We know that jihad, the, the, the strive in a battlefield, and we have another jihad, which is jihad al akbar, those people who want to change for good, those who want to change for better, those who want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but in the same time they have a bad habit, bad desire, bad attitude. Shaitan and nafs are defeating them. And he spent so many years just to maintain his iman. This person is a striver for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah wa ta'ala grant us ability to strive against our nafs and shaitan, inshallah. My cameraman asked me to stop for break. We'll continue after the break, inshallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother and sister in Islam, welcome back to our program. And once again, we'd like to thank all our viewers for the emails and SMSs. And we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala make it easy for us to fulfill the haqq of Allah and the haqq of our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us leave this world with peace and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen, thumma ameen, wa rabbil alameen. Before I, ke- I continue with my program, I'd like to thank our viewers and uh, shukran for your comment, our respected brother, uh, Muhammad Hassan, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for such a good word like this. But I want to tell you, inshallah, I do uh, prepare a topic about the kingdom of our grandmothers, you know, old age people. They call him in South Africa, Gogo and Madala. That our granny and nana. Those people, our Jadda and Jadda, our great parents, the Barak in our, our house, 
add in our life. So inshallah, we'll make a special program about the kingdom of our grandparents, that barakah came to our life, our grandmothers and fathers. And we are the nafil and nafila of uh, uh, our parents and our grand, uh, grandparents. May Allah make it easy for us to fulfill the right of our elderly, elderly Muslims, sisters and brothers, inshallah. Before the break, I was talking about that jihad on nafs. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala knows that we are insan, children of Adam. And the responsibility upon me and you and the challenge upon me and you, which all of us we face, is more heavier than the challenge of Adam alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam is our father, and he is, is a father of the nation and the father of Anbiya. The, the, the command of Adam, it was only one. What was that? Do not eat from the tree. But he gave him so many alternatives. Eat from all the tree except one. And Adam couldn't take that one command. He forgot it, or he, he did trust shaitan and iblis and something like that. But me and you, did we have a command like don't eat from the tree? We got uncountable command of Allah, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not. So you got so many, la taf'al, la taf'al, la taf'al. All right, the difference between us and Adam alayhi salam, that Adam alayhi salam did hear the forbidding things from Allah himself. It's called direct command. From Allah, Rabbul Izzat, to Adam straight. There was no prophet in between or Jibreel. And Adam alayhi salam could not fulfill the haq of that type of command. And he did eat from the tree. He made a slip or forgot to whatever the ulama say about it. But me and you, we get it from Jibreel alayhi salam. Jibreel gave it to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam and gave us so many command. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said, خَلَقْتُكَ وَأَعْلَمْ I have created you. And I do know that you have weakness in yourself. I know that. That's why Allah is not ghafoor only, is ghaffar, exaggerating in his, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave us so many command to, to abstain from it and to do and not to do. But he gave also us so many chances to repent. So don't say the command of Allah so many but also the doors of tawbah are so many. To look at the face of your mom and dad, your, your son is forgiven and you get a reward of hajj. To say alhamdulillah, after you eat three times, all your sin of, you shaking the hand of the Muslim is, the two of you are forgiven. So don't say the command is so many, it's too much for me because the door of repenting is too much. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala appreciated from you that jihad on nafs. So many of us, we have a bad habit. So many. Everyone, you go to, everyone knows his story with his attitude and his nafs. Everyone. There's no one ma'asum. There's no one ma'asum. What we do, we try to cultivate. We try to reshape that attitude. Because we got nafs, we got shaitan, we got desire. A young man who's not married, so many fitna around him. The women are walking naked. The TV the movie, the fitna around him, and he's unable to marry. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala look at this, this person and said, Alladheena jahadu feena. Those people who strive in us for the sake of Allah. So many people, poor, needs money, really needs money for food, for medication, desperately need some money. And they're holding money of the others, and it's very easy for them to go and break and still. But he said, no, I leave it for the sake of Allah. This is a real strife, brother and sister in Islam. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala with these people. A boy was, had a, a, a very good chance to commit adultery. But he decided, said, no, I fear Allah. I can't, I can't do it. So what a lucky boy when he gained the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ana ma'a ibadi idha jahadu fina. I am with my servant if they are striving for the sake of me, that type of strife. So we as a Muslim, 24 hours, we are mujahideen, haram, haram, astaghfirullah, jazakallah. You know, you got so many rules. Muslims, lowering his gaze, don't think about haram, so many rules here. So you are the striver 24 hours for the sake of Allah. In the month of Ramadan, 
In the month of Ramadan, we are mujahideen. It's called a real jihadist because we're hungry. We've got so many challenges, not only the desire of stomach and the desire of private part, the desire of tongue, the desire of, of many desire we have. In, we, we suppress that desire for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslim is planting goodness every day. He's, he's, he's every day, right. We have some nafs in ourselves, they call nafsul ammara. What is nafsul ammara to be so? We have that inner, that creation of Allah in our body motivated us, drives us to do evil. Allah gave that ability to the nafs to do good and to do bad. 24 hours we are trying to purify and maintain that desire or that nafs till we become mukh. Lisin. Mukhlisin, it means sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa inna Allah la ma'al muhsinin. If you do that, indeed Allah will elevate your status as a muhsinin, a pious person. Because the pious person is living as he sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah sees him. So once you have that jihad on nafs, striving for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you gain the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa Allah is with you. You know, you see now the women are walking naked and you've got a style here yeah, and the, the design of dressing and what, what, what. And we find a young girl, a pretty girl, decided to wear the hijab, doesn't want that fashion, doesn't want that style for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Outside, without mahram, she's the lady which Nabi Muhammad wanted to be or to, to see that is a lady who is falling under the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brother and sister Islam, if you are striver for the sake of Allah, you are not alone, you have, you're gaining the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another person who gained the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but sometimes we don't realize, now I'm, I'm reminding you, I'm reminding myself, that in Allah ma'ashahid hina yu'addi shahadata. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah will be with the witness when he fulfilled the right of his witness. What is that? Many of us been asked to give a witness. And you want to speak the truth. And you look right and left and look at the face of the people and you hold that witness because it's going to cause a problem, going to make a fight, or you're going to lose something, you're going to have a problem like here or there. So you suppress the witness or the true witness and you become a dumb shaitan or shaitan who could not talk. Brother and sister in Islam, what a brave person who's, who came forward and he give the true witness for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulama, they gave the true witness. And we see thousands of ulama are in jail because of the kalimatul haq or the witness. How many of people, they suppress da'wah because they're scared to lose job. Oh, the police will arrest them. Oh, you want PA, yeah, will, 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 will you got the, what you call blacklisted, yeah, or there. Right. How many person even been killed and lost his life because of the word he spoke it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of the oppressor or the leaders who does not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many person, the court call him to speak the truth and he hide the truth. The katama shahada. How many, how many uh, uh, scholars of Christian and Jews knows that Islam is a true religion but because of so many reasons, they suppress that, that witness or that word and they don't want to speak the truth. How many Muslim scholars, they give a false fatwa for the worldly things and he hide the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Allah tabarak wa ta'ala be with those who decided to speak the truth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Journalists, media people, parents, sons, neighbors, each and every one being asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come forward and speak the truth with no fear. For the, why we no fear? Because Allah with him. Even if they killed him, he's the winner. Why? Because he's not alone. I'm doing that for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ummatul Islam, 
do not hide the secret, do not suppress the, the, the true witness, do the shahada for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mothers, parents, speak the truth. If someone tell you something as a wasiyah and as a well, say it as it, do not change, do not sell yourself to the others and do not sell your akhirah for the dunya of someone else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to utter the truth for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Short break, we'll continue after the break, inshallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother and sister Islam, welcome back to our program. And once again, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us to practice the teaching of our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I do believe and have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that so many Muslims are aware about what I'm saying now and they get it naturally because the fitrat, the natural feeling of the, the human is this one. Anything out of that is not a mass sickness and disease in the Muslim community. We do have millions of Muslims, alhamdulillah, they spoke the truth and they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are aware about the oppression and they try to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another group of Muslims who people gain the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said in hadith al-Qudsi in uh, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith in Allah ma'a riqaq al-qulub Allah tabarak wa ta'ala with those who have a soft heart when we talk about softness in the heart and people are talking and uh, make a bad propaganda against Islam. They say Muslims are terrorists, Muslims are killing people, uh, Islam spread by sword, they got so many, jihad it means you kill people and bomb people like that. And they show us on, on TV, on the media, how they fabricate lies and how to make that terrible propaganda against Muslims and Islam. And nowadays, people, they seek information not from the book and the ground. They, see, they seek information from the screen and internet. They don't know the reference of that. They don't have the proof. But nowadays, the public, they are, they are, they are common sense in their ears. And like a parrot, they get it like this. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala placed in the heart of the Muslims some sort of softness and kindness and mercy and, and compassion unbelievable because we've been commanded by Allah to follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you want to know how much mercy Muslim get, come and see the role model of Muslims, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We as a Muslim believe that all of us, the human being and the creation of Allah are the servant of Allah. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is the master of all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala set up a sharia and law that la darara wa la dirar. There is no harming to give or no harming to receive. Do not harm yourself. Do not harm the others. Do not allow the others to harm you. That's why, as I said now, now, we, we, we've been commanded by Allah to speak the truth. They say Muslim got a long tongue. It's not a long tongue. We have to obey the command of Allah. It's in our book to speak the truth. And the, to call it zulmun nafs. Zulmun nafs, it means you oppress yourself by holding the truth, you're not saying it. That's why we got something that's called da'wah. What is da'wah? You propagate Islam as a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we don't force people to, 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 to become Muslim. They must come with their own desire. Muslims, always sensitive, because the ayat of Allah, the verses in Quran, soft in the heart of the believer. If you read the verses about Jahannam, about Quran al-Kareem, when he spoke to this, when he, when he goes straight to the heart of the person and the soul of the person and the mind of the person, cooked it in a beautiful way. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab was very cruel, buried his own daughter life before Islam. But when his sister Fatima bint al-Khattab gave him the Qur'an to read, so he started the Qur'an with Surah Taha. And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said it in Qur'an, Taha, 
That word is called Taha, the name of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an heard that word Taha, ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an litashqa. That sound of that ayah and the meaning of that ayah, the power of the mercy of this ayah, it touched the heart of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab and he surrendered and accepted Islam same time. His intention to kill Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What I'm trying to say, Quran came to soften the heart. And the Arabs, let me tell you about the Arabs. Before Islam, the Arabs has no mercy at all. They fought each other for so many years. To live in, in a jungle and, and in a mountain and a desert, it teach you some, especially the people of Mecca. People of Mecca live amongst the mountains. They are very rough and very harsh, naturally like that. So they say, Ja'a Arabi, Ja'a Arabi, and hold the Prophet like this. A nomad man came to the, they hold him like that, because it's like that. It's like uncivilized, they come like that. So Nabi Muhammad Wasallam understood the harshness of this uh, uh, people of nomads or the desert or the people who live on that mountain uh, side. Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam naturally He's bil mu'minin ra'ufur rahim. So merciful and compassionate. Rahim, he knows that the, you know ra'uf and rahim, it's also a quality of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ra'ufur rahim. Ra'uf, ra'uf, feel sorry after he catch you. When Allah tabarak wa ta'ala capture you in a day of qiyamah and take you to jahannam, the fire of jahannam, you feel sorry for you. And he doesn't want you to, like you, like the mother and father. You want to hit your son, but your hand and you, you, your body doesn't allow you. Even when you hit your child, which is not allowed in Islam, you feel bad. Not only physically abused, words. The true Muslim, when he utter a rough words and rude words, takes too long to heal from it, recover from it. it kills us. When you make mistake, you roll on bed. You don't rest. Why? Because this is the tabi'ah. This is the right. This is a normal thing. Anything comes that is because of the environment, because of nafs and, and shaitan. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was passing the, the house of Fatima radiallahu anha and he heard the child crying. And we know the crying of the children is just a language. He doesn't accept that and he went there and he said to Fatima, stop neglecting the child, you know that tears and the, the crying of the children is breaking my heart. That is a message for our mothers and sisters now. Do not let your child cry because it hurts the heart of those who feel, have mercy on the children. Right. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he read salah, and lead the people in salah, he heard the child crying there behind him. Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shortened his recitation and make salah short, just to make salah short, just to feel sorry for that child who crying. Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pick up the qualities of Allah and he practice it and he implement it in our life to have mercy, to learn how to forgive, He's not the man of teaching the others harshness and to be rude and to be rough. No, bil mu'minin ra'ufur rahim. Indeed, he's compassionate and merciful for, for, for the, the believer. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he, he described himself as Rahmanun rahim. And he called the womb of the mother is rahim. And he said that, man la yarham la yurham, whosoever, does not show mercy, he will never give mercy because you did deprive yourself from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hadith and narration that the prostitute woman was walking on the, on the road and in the desert and saw the dog very thirsty, want to drink water. Actually leaking the sand, want one water. A prostitute woman doesn't know Allah, but in this moment, she has got rahma. She got the mercy which Allah placed in her heart and my heart and your heart. She's going to her job. And what dog? Can die that dog. 
She doesn't care. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excite the mercy of the heart of this woman. And she came down in a well. And you don't know what is the well in the Arabia. Not like our wells here in South Africa. It's just one meters, two meters, you pick up the water or the lake or some poor holes like this. The well in Arabia, they after so many meters down, they call it Jub. Jub like Yusuf alayhi salam is well, very deep and dark. This lady, because of the mercy and compassion, because of Rahmah in her heart, came down in that rescue place, put the water in her shoes, and put the shoes in her mouth, and she climbed again and go and give the dog, and it was not enough, came back, give the dog a full uh, uh, quantity of water for the pleasure of Allah because of the mercy. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala took that amal and action of this woman and forgave her. She was committing zina, fahisha, major sin, goes away because of uh, a dog. I don't know how much the dog in your eyes, or how much value the dog you have it in, 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 in the value of the dog you have it in your eyes. And on another hand, a pious woman praying well, fasting Ramadan, making Hajj, but she locked up the cat, locked up the cat in the room, and she went to visit someone, and the cat died in the room. You know, I don't know. She locked the cat and say, "Wait, I'm coming." And the cat died because of hunger or thirst. That, that cat died and Allah took that lady in the fire of Jahannam. Cat, to kill a cat. I'm asking now the people, how many human beings the people kill? Not only cat. That's why we said we learn the mercy because the mercy is the secret of akhirah, the secret of, of hisab in the day of Qiyamah. Many people, many people, they want to, to show mercy to, 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 to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we don't want to show the mercy to Allah. We have to show the mercy to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala place the mercy in our heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to, to bring up that mercy which Allah placed it in our heart, inshallah. Brother and sister in Islam, shukran jazeel until we see you, inshallah, next time. Jazakum Allah khair al jaza. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. ربنا رب القلوب وهو علام الغيوب في الشروق وفي الغروب نوره يهدي العصا ربنا رب القلوب وهو علام الغيوب في الشروق وفي الغروب نوره يهدي العصا ربنا الهادي الودود